Thank you, Father, for tonight. Thank you in advance for all you are committed to doing. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And a special good evening to all the online family members. Um, you're connecting to the master's house for the first time, maybe the second time. Maybe you got to know about the master's house through the conference. Thank you. Thank you. We get all the feedbacks. We get all the messages. Thank you. We are proud to hear how God is speaking and blessing you through this conference. Um, you want to do beyond just watching after the, the service, the session, uh, check our website. Um, scroll through our social media handles and you get to know more about the master's house. And while you are that right now, make sure you share the broadcast. If you're on Facebook, don't just watch. Click on the share button free of charge. You don't get to pay for it. But someone will thank you for it. Okay, so make sure you click on the button and be a blessing to someone tonight. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 3 to 5. And then I'll touch quickly on verse 8. And the Babylonian king told Ashpenaz, the chief of his officials, to bring in some of the sons of Israel, including some from the royal family and from the nobles. Young men without blemish and handsome in appearance, skillful in all wisdom. Endowed with intelligence and discernment and quick to understand. Competent to stand in the presence of the king. And able to serve in the king's palace. He also ordered Ashpenaz to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned a daily ration for them from his finest food and from the wine which he drank. They were to be educated and nourished this way for three years so that at the end of that time, they were prepared to enter the king's service. Now we jump to verse 8. Hallelujah. Amen. We are advancing tonight on the subject, the life that counts, the life that counts. And you can call this a part three. You see, the Change Agents Conference is an opportunity to enjoy fellowship, to share fellowship with other believers, to exalt the name of Jesus together. Don't forget this. It's an opportunity for us to share fellowship with other believers. An opportunity for us together with other believers to exalt the name of Jesus and also for us to receive what we need to be a righteous influence in our world. First, it is to share fellowship with other believers. To exalt the name of Jesus together. And also to receive what we need to be righteous influence in our world. And where we read from, let's begin from that premise. Where we read from, uh, we see that Daniel found himself. He was brought in against his will. He was brought into Babylon. And one of the instructions from the king, you, you, you dare not think about uh, negotiating the instruction of the king. You dare not. Uh, an instruction from the king was that everyone was supposed to eat of the same, of the same meal and drink of the same drink that he drank. But please, let's start with this understanding. Daniel had good knowledge of his identity. Daniel had good knowledge of his identity and he was not going to allow location to make him forget who he was. He was not going to lose his identity for anyone or because of anything. Now please listen to this and understand what God is saying to you. Daniel understood the demands of his identity. I, I dare some need that there are many believers, possibly online, maybe not on site, who do not understand the demands of your identity. You call your 
yourself a Christian is just on lip service and lip surface. Uh, but you don't understand that for this identity that you have, uh, there is a demand, there is a demand, there is a demand, uh, there is a way of life that is non-negotiable. So when a prescription was given, an instruction was given to say this is how Daniel would live, Daniel understood the demands of his identity. Daniel was in a foreign land. But he did not allow location change character. Yeah. He found himself in a place. Foreign. They had no regard for his God. But Daniel did not allow his location to determine his character. Mm. Your place of work should not change your character. <laughs> your place of work should not change your character. Don't have a different character where you work. And a different character where you stay. And another character where you worship. Be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. Daniel was a man of consistent character. The Daniel you find in church is the same one you find at work. Consistency of character. Do a connection here. Who he was in Jerusalem was who he was in Babylon. So when he came to Babylon and they prescribed the way of life, Daniel said, who I was in Jerusalem cannot change in Babylon. Who he was at work was consistent with who he was at church. Daniel was a man of consistent character. And you, you, you may write this down. I think it would help. Where you are, should not be the excuse for the way you are. Where you are should not be the excuse for the way you are. Where you work should not be the excuse for the way you are. And please, I beg you, never use condition and location as the excuse for the things that you do. Never use condition. It's because the way things are like this. That is why I have become like this. Because of the way things have been. That is why I'm still like this. Please listen. Never use condition and location as the excuse for the things that you do. Never. Never. Where you are should not change who you are. Where you are should not change who you are. Where you are should not prevail over your love for God. What is going on in your life should not displace the love for God. As a matter of fact, uh, the Christianity that can be suspended and resumed is fake. The Christianity you can suspend and resume at will is fake. It's a sign you've not encountered the Christ. It's a sign you are putting up an axe. Because listen, listen, Christianity is not supposed to be an axe. It's a life. Who you are on Monday is who you are on Saturday. Who you are at home is who you are at work. The Christianity that can be suspended and resumed is fake. You've not encountered Jesus. Where you are should not change who you are. Where you walk should not determine how you live. Apostle Paul says something that I believe must be the testimony of every believer. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Yeah. This ought to be the testimony of every true believer. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. If you got a passion Bible, that would help. Now look at this scripture and ask yourself if this is your testimony. Apostle Paul said, my old identity died with Christ, co-crucified with Christ. It no longer lives. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. I don't live for myself anymore. I don't live by myself anymore. It's no longer mine. It is for the anointed one who lives his life through me. The anointed one, Jesus, is living through my life. I live in union with him as one. My new life is empowered by faith of the son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me. This ought to be your testimony. This now is not a prayer. It should be the life you are living. It should be the life that you are living. Where you work should not be the excuse for the things that you do. 
Mm. The Christianity, I said, that can be suspended and resumed is fraud. Is fraud. Is a sign you don't know Jesus. It's a sign you are just using the church fellowship, the church garden. There's something you are looking for and it has nothing to do with the Christ. It has everything to do with yourself. Flesh, materialism. The Christianity that, that you can put off and we are not Daniel, who he was in Babylon or rather in Jerusalem was consistent to who he was in Babylon. Are we together here? Are we together here? Christianity is not an act. Christianity is a life. Christianity is not an act. Christianity is a life. They wake you up anywhere. The language must be the same. The attitude must be the same. The desires must be the same. The appetite must be the same. Don't use condition and location as the excuse. No, sir. Condition revealed you. Location exposed you. Don't use condition and location to say because of you know, the kind of people that are around me. Because of what I'm going. No, sir. The Christianity that can be suspended and resumed on Sunday is a fraud. It's fraud, rather. Are we together now? Now, we are still talking about the man called Daniel. The influence called Daniel. I, I could put it that way. The influence called Daniel. We are still talking of that influence. That, that should not be you. That should be what you aspire for. Don't just come to church, hear wonderful preaching, and not personalize what you are hearing. Scripture says if you are just hearers and not doers, you are living in self-deception. And there is nothing that's as pathetic, as pitiable, like a person deceiving himself. And we're still speaking of the influence called Daniel. This man existed as a righteous influence. His impact is so strong that many years after, we are studying him. Mm, yes. Many years after, we are talking about him. We are receiving wisdom from his life for guidance. We are receiving wisdom from his life. And now listen, this is the portrait and the testimony of a fruitful life. Yeah. This is the portrait. This is the testimony where you are living your life in such a way that generations after you will have something to learn. You are living your life in such a way. It's not just about daily bread, money for this, money, for, and that's all you think. There's a generation coming behind you that will need to be guided by your life. Are you living in that way? Or all you see is just now yourself, your needs, your issue. Hebrews chapter 6 reminds us, verse 12. He said, let's follow after them who through faith and patience they obtain the promise. In the same way, a generation that is coming behind should be able to say, we are going to follow after sister this, brother that, who lived in 2024, who despite everything did not bow to compromise, who despite everything maintained a prayer fervency. We are going to watch and study. We heard about that brother that despite everything, his prayer life, the, the schedule was never broken. We heard about that sister, how she lived for Jesus. Live your life in such a way that generations after you will have something to learn. Talking about Daniel today. Hundreds of years after, we're talking about a man, how he stood, how he lived. We can proudly call him an influence, the influence called Daniel. Now, according to our Bible test, Nebuchadnezzar, now listen to this now, this is very, very strategic. Nebuchadnezzar insisted that the guys who are to be selected to the royal palace must be people who are able to learn. Must be people who, who have the capacity to learn. There are people who are too full. No new knowledge can enter. There is no space for new information. That's why business, you've been doing it the same way for 15 years. No growth. You've been doing that thing for the last 10 years. The same way. You are too full. No new thing is entering. Nebuchadnezzar said, I don't just want any human being in this palace. I want people who have the capacity to learn. I want people who are teachable. Those who are open to new perspective. Those who are open to being challenged. Those who are open for what they knew to be challenged with new information. Capacity to learn. So put it in a subtle way. Those who have a teachable spirit. He said, these are the people that I want. 
people who are open to learning things. Open to learning things. Please, my friends, don't just pray for access. Make sure you are truly prepared for access. Because there are doors you are asking God to open for you. If he opens it, you have nothing to deliver at that level. Now, Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm just, now bring people who have something to deliver at this level. Many a time we're asking God, oh God, open doors. Oh God, next level. And the, the real issue is this. You are not prepared for what you are praying for. So don't just pray for access. Please make sure your prayer is preparing you for access. Make sure the prayer you are praying is building you for access. Listen, there is what is needed to sustain access. There is what is needed to sustain certain relationships. Meaningful relationships are sustained with value. There is what, now, when you, are, you have relationships with people who, you can't, you can't really define what is holding relationship. Please, that's a relationship to reconsider. Meaningful relationships are sustained with value. Mutual value. Meaningful relationships are sustained with mutual. You are not draining them. They are not draining you. Their value is mutual. There is what is needed to sustain access. Don't just pray for access. Make sure that you are preparing for access. The king said, I have criteria for the kind of people that must come here. I have criteria. Now look at Daniel 1 verse 7. Just write this down. We don't have time to keep flipping through scripture. Just write, write it down. Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. And the Bible says, and God gave these men. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God gave them wisdom and the ability to learn. Shouldn't that be a prayer worth praying? Come on, are you hearing me here? Is that not a prayer worth praying? Is the Father give me breakthrough? Father, open father the ability to learn could it just be that because you lack the capacity to learn god has left you at this level until you become open to learning and god gave them wisdom and the ability to learn daniel 117 teachable spirit these guys did not just grow by prayer they grew by learning they grew by learning please hear me well prayer cannot replace learning Prayer cannot replace self-development. As a matter of fact, you commit yourself to learning. Learning is a sacrifice. You don't just pray your way into self-development. There must be the sacrifice of self-development. There is a commitment to growth. A commitment to learn. A commitment to be better. And devotion to it. Consistency on the matter. Listen. Maybe you should write this down because I'll give you many things. So when you get home, if you forget everything, some of these things you can, because now, there are people who don't write. If you don't tell them, write this. <laughs> now write this down. If all you do, if all you do is pray and you stop at prayer, you will keep repeating the same prayer point for many years because there is how you prepare for answers there is how to prepare for answers if all you do is pray and stop at prayer you will keep repeating the same prayer point for many years maybe this is giving someone a clue why you've been repeating certain prayer points for many years this business oh god uh, let it grow this is my career oh god and you'll be repeating for too many times, go back to this again and again. If all you do is pray and you stop at prayer, you will keep repeating the same prayer point for many years. Daniel understood that he needed to be committed to standing out. And he, he, he showed it with sacrifice. So this man demonstrated this. Desire. He wanted to stand out. There was a reason he told the, the, the head of the, the, the keeper, the guy who was in charge of keeping them, he said, allow me eat this. After a while, come and check and you will see a difference. Now, with me, the man was determined to stand out. See, a major area of deliverance the church needs is the deliverance from survivor mentality. 
Many of you are okay with survival. As long as I have a roof over my head, as long as I'm not owing anybody, as long as I can eat, as long as I'm not sick now, what else am I looking for? Survivor! Not Daniel. He said, after the word, come back and you will see that we are standing out. There must be a standout consciousness and you don't just stop at declaring it. You pay the price for it. Pay the price. Pay the price. You pay the price. You pay the price. And Daniel committed to being better. Committed to being better. Developing himself. Committed. And when the guy came back, the guy observed. He said, this guy is, is way better than these other guys. Commitment to being better. Can I please appeal to you? Please. Christian. Believer. Hear me well. As we speak about righteous influence, this is important. Develop yourself to be useful anywhere. Develop. Be on that journey. Develop. Be on that journey. Have that commitment. Develop yourself to be useful to anyone. Develop yourself to be useful anywhere. Develop yourself to be useful to anyone. Develop yourself. You put it mildly. Please develop yourself for usefulness. Develop yourself for usefulness. You are asking God for access to the palace. Can you deliver at the palace level? If the palace was open to you, what, what will you be doing there? Taking pictures. Christians need to wake up. Many of us are not ready for the prayer we are praying. That's why God, God sees you as a joke. So when, when he wakes up, you know, whenever you wake up, that's your morning. If you wake up, now, if you wake up 17 years from now, that's, that's the day your morning starts. The day you wake up. You're praying for the greatness you are not ready for. And God does not promote blindly. Did you get that? God is not a blind promoter. Never. Never. He will give Joseph access to the palace. But Joseph has what to deliver there. He will bring Daniel before Saul in the palace. When um, David, sorry. He will bring David to the palace. When David gets to the palace, he has what to deliver. My dear, you want to have access to the palace? What can you deliver? What? At the level of palace, now, at your level, maybe at this present phase, whatever, you believe you can do something. At the palace of the level, uh, at the level of the palace, rather, at a level of global recognition, will you have something to deliver? Develop yourself for usefulness. Be on that journey. Be on that journey. Have that commitment. Stay on it. Stay faithful to it. Develop yourself to be useful to anyone. Develop yourself. That was a story. We learn. In the life. The lesson rather. We learned. From Daniel. Now when you see Daniel chapter 1 verse 20. I, I'm still coming to the reflections in a bit. When you look at Daniel chapter 1 verse 20. And now please this is key. The Bible showed us Daniel and his friends. They live the godly life. Daniel and his friends, look at this. They lived the godly life. They were committed to developing themselves. As a matter of fact, they became 10 times better. 10 times better. You don't just get there just by prayer. You get there by commitment to personal growth. Their commitment to personal development. They became 10 times better. Now, what do you understand from this? The greatness that you desire will happen in partnership with God. I'll say it again. The greatness that you desire, I'm going somewhere with this, is going to happen in partnership with God. In other words, it is not entirely up to God. And it is not entirely up to you. Is, are you getting something here? Yeah. The greatness you desire is not entirely up to God. So it's not only prayer. It's not only prayer. It doesn't matter who lied to you. It's not only prayer. The greatness you desire is not entirely up to God. 
and it is not entirely up to you. I'll say it again. The greatness you desire is going to happen in partnership with God. Daniel understood this. God is committed to my life, but I will not be lazy. God is committed to my life. He brought me here for a purpose, but I will not be idle. I won't be lazy. And the man consistently developed himself and God brought him to greatness. The greatness you desire. That greatness you are praying for is not entirely up to God. And it's not entirely up to you. It is going to happen in partnership with God. Can I get an amen? She could go on and on about dissecting a few things about Daniel. But allow me just to talk on the reflections and as we get close to the meat of tonight's session. Now, let's continue from yesterday. Reflections for influence. From the life of Daniel. We touched on number one yesterday. We touched on number two yesterday. Number three. Oh, you forgot. What's number one? Sorry? Sorry? What's number one? Fridge back to me. Preach back to me again. What's number two? Diligent on your job pace. Number three, let's, let's get on with this now quickly. Number three, and I'm going to stay on this for a bit. Hmm. 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 Daniel is proof that by God's wisdom, you can work with the most difficult people. Daniel is proof and you will understand how this concerns you in a bit Daniel is proof that by God's wisdom you can you can walk you can win with the most difficult people a, a major a major obstacle to the growth of many believers we can't survive difficult people we can't walk in difficult spaces we can't walk in difficult conditions Daniel and you understand this in a bit Daniel is proof that by God God's wisdom, by God's wisdom, by God's wisdom, you can walk with the most difficult people. Now, let me tell you about the man that Daniel was working for. Let me give you a peep into this man's pattern and this, this man's leadership style. As you study God's word in Daniel chapter 20, um, Daniel, Daniel chapter, the book of Daniel chapter, chapter 2 rather, um, the, the man Daniel was working for, the name of the man is called Nebuchadnezzar at this phase. This was a man who had a dream. The dream troubled him so much. The dream frightened him so much. The man had a dream and he called his advisors. And told the advisors to tell him the dream. Is there a boss difficult than that? Now, he it, it said, as you tell me the dream and the meaning. Now, the later part can make sense. To say, okay, wise men, magicians, come tell me the meaning of my dream. But the man said, tell me the dream. And, and the people replied him, sir, nobody can do this. It's not, and the man said, oh, you can't tell me the dream I dreamed. Okay, he said, all the wise men in this land, take them out to kill them. But guess what? Daniel found favor with that kind of man. How? God's wisdom can help you walk with the most difficult people. Hmm. Hmm. A major reason why many believers, and that's a challenge with the church, you find Christians not rising to positions of influence is because we lack the capacity to work with difficult people. And guess what? That's where influence is. That's the path to influence. You have to work with Pharaoh. You have to work with Potiphar. You have to work with Nebuchadnezzar. You've got to work with difficult people because that's where God wants to show his glory. That's where God wants to show his light. That's where God wants to reveal his power. Please, stop being afraid of working with people. Stop! Stop being afraid of working with unbelievers. Stop being afraid! Light is useless where there's no darkness. Light is useless. Where there is no darkness. The value of light is revealed in the dark. Are you hearing me at all here? 
Stop being afraid of working with people. Stop being afraid. Stop being afraid. Stop. You see, let me say this to you. Your light is not tested when you are running from people who are not like you. Your light is not tested. Okay, I'll take it further. The truth you, you claim you know is not tested if you are only surrounded by people like you. The truth, this revelation you think you have is not tested because light is tested in darkness. When you are able to walk with dark people, difficult people, and you still uphold righteousness, you are still burning for Jesus, you are still consistent with your prayer life, you are still on fire for Jesus, then your light has been tested. They didn't put it out. They didn't cause it to dim. They didn't make you question the reality of this, your God. You know why you are running from working with unbelievers? You are not sure of who you are. You are not. Everything you know about God is what somebody told you. You've not encountered him. So you are afraid that you, you, you may lose yourself. You know what Jesus said in Luke 19 verse 10? And let me, let me tell us how this connects to us. In Luke 19 verse 10, Jesus said something quite instructive, quite powerful. Jesus said, the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. <laughs> so any person that has a kingdom consciousness, any person that has a kingdom thinking, this should also be your thinking, to seek and to save the lost. Where are they? Go to the, where, you know, where, where people who are different from you walk. Pray and believe God to get opportunities there to walk. Believe God to create an opening for the sake of the kingdom, not just for survival. For the sake of the kingdom, Lord, create a space for me there. This light must shine. This revelation I keep getting in church every Sunday. I'm tired of just writing on a book. This light needs to shine somewhere. Hear me, beloved, and hear me very well. God has no problem. With you walking with people with dark characters. The problem is where your light is too weak to shine. That's where God has a problem. The problem comes when your light is too weak to shine. They come into the space, you look like every other person. The kind of jokes they make, you laugh with them. The kinds of analysis they make, you are comfortable in that space. Daily in that office, you, are, you, 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 you go righteous, you return defiled. You are too weak to shine. God has no problem. God has no problem sending you to walk in dark territories. The problem is when your light is too weak to shine. That's where the problem is. That's where the problem is. Not Daniel. Not Daniel. Not Daniel. Not Daniel. We have been empowered for the darkness in our world. You are not empowered to shine where light is shining. We have been empowered to go where darkness is. In case you don't know, you are not in charge for miracle. Let's tell the church the truth. You are not in charge of breakthrough. You are being empowered to shine where darkness reigns. Every other thing you need will come. The finance you need will come. The child you need will come. The marriage you need will come. But please understand this. When your understanding is tuned to this consciousness, I am being empowered. Sent to darkness. I am being empowered for the darkness in my world. I am being empowered for Jesus to be revealed through me. Everywhere I find myself. When that becomes your consciousness. Everything else that is lacking in your life. Jesus brings it. The challenge we have. Is that the church has left the major. And we are excited about the minor. I could bet on my last dime. If I raise the prayer point now, both those watching online, first to pray for sinners to be saved. After five minutes, I say this because I know it. Some of you, we have nothing to say. Absolutely nothing. Because you don't have a heart for sinners. You don't. 
You don't pray for them at home. You can't learn it in church. They are not a part of your prayer list. You can't fake it here. So you pray as long as we ginger you. Open your mouth. Begin to pray. As long as you are hearing that voice, you keep praying. As the voice dies down, or maybe the drummer now stops, you start looking. What else do they want to do? But let me raise a prayer point. Whoever is holding you from assessing your next level, every invisible chain, huh? as I pray, catch fire. Hey, I will have to shout, in Jesus' name, stop. Does that not tell you that you've missed it? You don't need God to come down. Let his prophet tell you you have missed it. You've missed it. You don't pray for sinners at home. You can't come and fake it here. You can't fake it here. You have no, no, no excitement for a, a sinner saved. No excitement. When was the last time you prayed for unbelievers to be saved? When? When was the last time? But if I ask, when was the last time you prayed for a breakthrough? This morning. Is this why you were saved? For breakthrough? Is this the reason the blood was shed? Do you know the sacrifice paid for us to have access? We are saved and sent to darkness. We must go where they are. We must pray to meet them in business. We must pray that they come to buy from us. We must pray that they come to sell to us. We must pray for God to bring us into partnership with them. There must be that excitement because light is useless if it does not shine. Light is worthless. Zero value if it is not shining into the dark. Useless light. Useless light. Oh, I'm the light of the world. Are you shining? I'm the light. Listen, I said it before. That's Scripture is not a blessing, no. it's a responsibility. You are the light of the world. In other words, shine into the world. Don't just say, Amen. God has called me light. You are not aware. It's not a blessing alone, it's a responsibility on your shoulders. Can I get an Amen tonight? So please hear me well. You cannot be surrounded by only Christians. You cannot be surrounded by only Christians. We cannot trust your light if it has not been tested by darkness. We cannot trust this, this revelation, this faith, this trust in God you say you have if it is not daily, daily, daily being tested by darkness. Daily, daily. We need to be out there. For the sake of the kingdom, we must go out there. We must pray that God give me, give me job opportunities. Where, where people who don't believe in God are, where they are gathered, people who have a twisted understanding of the reality of God, give me opportunity there. Now, you see the thinking? The thinking is not about money. The thinking is about kingdom. Are you with me tonight? Come on, are you with me tonight? Okay, you know what I'm saying is hitting below the belt. That's how it should be. You didn't come here to receive, hey, receive breakthrough. Re hey, you forget gotten that from January. It's time to hear truth. Can I get an amen here? Amen. Number five, quickly now. Reflections for influence from the life of Daniel. Daniel is proof that genuine spirituality will earn you honor before others. Daniel is proof that genuine, authentic spirituality. You. <laughs> Daniel began to assess supernatural solutions, supernatural direction, supernatural ideas. Because he had a heart for God and because he was a man of solution, people honored him. Are you seeing the connection now? Genuine spirituality. Genuine spirituality. Let's stop playing games. Stop acting church. Authentic. A heart that truly seeks Jesus. Genuine spirituality. We earn you honor before others. Genuine. Let's, let's get on fire and stay on fire. Let's get on fire that everyone that comes in contact with us, they should have a testimony of, of someone who has touched Jesus. Not someone who has been in church from childhood. But you as, as a brother, they give birth to inside church. So you know church in and out. 
So when somebody comes in contact with you, all they hear is church history. All they hear is church talk. They can't feel fire. They can't feel fire. Nothing burns around you. Instead, those who are trying to stand, they come around you, they, they lose what they have. Let's get serious. Let's get serious. It's better you are not in this thing than to be in this thing as a joke. You know, it's better you are not a Christian than to be a Christian that is a fraud. Are we together now? Those who truly honor God. Hey, listen, God will put them at such a pedestal where they enjoy honor before others. Now, let me say this, and this is very key. If we genuinely, Pastor T, if we genuinely love God, if you genuinely love God, it shows in how you live. Are you getting me? It shows in how you live. Don't tell me Christianity is a thing of the heart. Stop that joke. It begins from the heart and extends everywhere. It begins from the heart. It, 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 it changes how you talk. It changes how you, your preference, your appetite, your attitude. It begins from the heart and extends everywhere. Don't say nobody should just judge me. Oh, you see me, it's me and God. God knows my heart. Stop the joke. Stop the foolery. Stop it. It starts from the heart. It invades your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. The things you choose, the things you prefer, your love for God has become what dictates your choices. Your honor for God is now what determines your direction. Your appetite is no more the things that you used to desire. Now the love for God has taken over. Listen, it begins from the heart and extends everywhere. So if you are still at that level where you say, no, nobody should judge anybody. Oh. This Christianity is a thing of the heart. You remember God said to, um, to David, to Saul, sorry, to Samuel. Mm -hmm. He said, Samuel, you are deceived by looking at the outward. I, the Lord, I see, go and study the context. Don't take a scripture that speaks to a context and make it a doctrine. Be careful of that. Because when people want to justify sin, they look for one scripture. Or they look for one man of God that preaches what endorses what they do. The man of God said, no, no, no. Nobody should be judged. by No, Christian, listen. And please hear me well. Authentic Christianity, it begins from the heart. It begins to eat you up righteously, positively. Everything begins to change. The kind of conversation that you are comfortable with start changing. Because something is rising on the inside. Are we together now? Something is rising on the inside. The, the, the way you spend your time starts changing. Because now, remember, you are now being led by the Spirit. Remember, as many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. So now, if you are a son of God, you don't, you don't co-lead yourself with the Holy Spirit. Are you getting me at all? Well, you say, sometimes I do what I like. Some other times I do what the Holy Spirit is saying. It doesn't work that way. As many as are led by the Spirit. So Christianity begins from the heart and it flows to other areas that people can see. Lift your right hand above your head. There's a prayer I want you to pray. Just declare this with me. Say in the name of Jesus. Say today, I receive wisdom to assess the hearts of people that are strategic to my life. Say in the name of Jesus. Today, I receive the wisdom to assess the hearts of the people strategic to my life. That's what Daniel enjoyed though. He had the wisdom to assess the heart of Nebuchadnezzar. There are people God brings you around. You lack wisdom to assess their heart. You lack wisdom to win them. God brings them to you. It takes wisdom to assess their heart. But it's not there. This is a prayer worth praying every time. The wisdom to assess the heart of those who are strategic to my destiny. Number five. Reflections. For influence. I'm bringing this together very quickly. Thank you, Father. Daniel is proof. And hear this well. That you, you can silence the wicked by being 
faithful to your assignment. By being faithful to your purpose. By being faithful to your mission. You can silence the wicked. Hmm. By being faithful. You see, focus and discipline will deny the enemy an advantage over you. Focus, discipline. Don't you understand how people conspired in Daniel chapter 6? And they came and said, let's look for something. I think from chapter 5, the hatred had begun. Chapter 6, we see what happened there. Where people conspired and said, let's, let's look for a way to fort this Daniel. Let's look for a way. They looked at how he walked. There was nothing to fort. They looked at how he delivered his service. There was... The man was not complacent. He was not a mediocre. He never delivered average. He was not a cheat. He was not a fraud. He never stole. You can't say he lied. He was focused on his assignment. And guess what? The same thing we learn from here. Faithfulness to your assignment will silence the enemy. They will have nothing against you. You are living life of Double standard, immorality. You are neither here nor there. So the enemy has a loud voice against you. He's called the accuser of the brethren. Faithfulness to the things of God. Faithfulness to, to your purpose, to your assignment, to your destiny, to the goal, the vision, the mission. Faithful, faithful, faithful. For the sake of this mission, I live like this. For the sake of this purpose, I live like this. For the sake of my covenant with God, I live like this. As you stay faithful to that commitment, you silence the enemy. They have nothing against you. They go from altar to altar. They'll be frustrated because there's nothing they have. They pay all kinds of demonic voices. It won't work. There's nothing they have. Faithfulness to God. Faithfulness to your assignment. Faithfulness to righteousness. Faithfulness to the truth of God's word. Faithfulness to that commitment you've entered with God will silence the wicked against you. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Number what now? Number six. No, is it six or seven? Is it six or seven? Are you sure? Very sure. <laughs> Daniel is proof that as you honor spiritual laws, you must also observe natural laws to rise in influence. Daniel is proof that as you honor spiritual laws, Daniel was a man of prayer. He didn't stop there. He was a man of prayer of excellence. He was a man of quality delivery. He was a man of consistent personal development. He was a man that you could testify. This man can deliver on his work. As you observe spiritual laws, prayer, fasting, tithing, please do not ignore the natural laws. We spoke about this on day one, if you remember very well. They are the natural laws that governs this natural world. As you observe it, because for too long a time, the church has been so programmed with spiritual laws, spiritual laws, spiritual laws. So a lot of believers are, are bankrupt of reward, everyday principles for quality living, quality delivery, quality representation. So you have Christians who are not critical thinkers. You have Christians who are not strategic planners. You, are, you have Christians who will never invest in a seminar. They will never invest in a training. Because the programming we have been told is spiritual. Is spiritual. No, sir! I beg to tell you the truth. A thousand times no. They are the natural laws that governs this world. Ignore them to your own detriment. You will be spiritually rich. Physically poor. You will be a spiritual billionaire. Huh? Spiritually, you are a multi-billionaire or multi, whatever way it's pronounced. Now go and use that your money to buy car. The ability to be able to communicate this to natural laws and observe them. So Daniel is testimony. I'm rushing through this now. So we can get some time to pray a bit. Daniel is proof that as you observe natural laws, Please don't ignore, as you observe spiritual laws rather, don't ignore the natural laws that governs this world. Don't ignore, don't ignore 
Don't ignore there is the law for access. There's the law to sustaining strategic relationships. There's the law for excellence. There's the law of diligence. There's the law of faithfulness. There's the law of consistency. There's the law of diligence. Don't ignore. Don't say, I prayed. It's now up to God. I've done. Excuse me. After you pray, it's time to walk. After you pray, it's time to train. If your prayer is not changing you, then you've been praying wrongly. If your prayer is not changing how you are thinking, your prayer is not changing how you are seeing, you've been taught the wrong way to pray. You've been exposed to a wrong way of prayer. Because prayer first changes you before it changes things. Prayer first changes you before it changes things. Prayer first changes you before it fixes things. Are we together now? Number one, please. Huh? What, have, what, what number have you written? Six. Okay, beautiful. So number what? Number seven. All right. Daniel is proof. And please, this is important. That no matter how good you are at what you do, there is at least someone trying to find fault with what you are doing. No matter how good. Now, please listen to how this connects to us in our daily life. No matter how nice you are, no matter how meek you are, no matter how generous you are, no matter how good you are at your job, there is at least someone who is daily praying and hoping to find fault with what you are doing. But look at the wisdom here. See where many believers have lost it. Don't make them the focus. Because this is the challenge now. That's why we, we raise many bitter Christians. We raise Christians who are suspicious. We raise Christians who, you know, they believe everybody is a potential witch around them. Why? You are so conscious of those who are after you that you have left what you should be going after. You are so conscious. Now, don't, don't focus on them. Stop being obsessed with haters. Stop being, now look at this. Stop being obsessed with haters, otherwise you will become like them. Too many Christians, you are so obsessed with enemies. You are obsessed with haters. You are so obsessed. The only time you take your prayer life serious is enemies, haters. The only thing that brings fear to your heart, enemies, haters. Stop being obsessed. Just know this reality exists. That no matter how good you are, no matter how kind you are, no matter how generous you are, there is at least somebody somewhere who is waiting, hoping, investigating, trying to find fault, to find a loophole in your life. Don't be ignorant of this. Neither must you make it your focus. Don't be ignorant and don't make it your focus. Have a vision that drives you. Have a vision that drives you. Many believers don't have a vision that drives them. You're just doing your career. Every day you go, you call. what is the vision for your life? I, I wish, maybe another time. Maybe another time. So I can really teach us how to have a personal mission statement. I can teach you how to have a personal... I wish we had time. One of the things I wanted to teach at this Change Agents Conference was to teach us now the journey of purpose. Knowing why you live, why you exist. You are not here just to make money and spend money. Why, why, why is God keeping you alive? Why are you not dead? Why does he make you wake up every day? There has to be something, my friend. Why does he supply breath to you on a daily basis? You think it's, for, it's just for you to spend money and make money? No, sir. There has to be something. You need to find it. There has to be a reason. So as you wake up at another day for that thing he woke me up for. So you don't make haters the focus. You make that thing the focus. Are you getting it? It is that thing that protects you. It is that thing that see, it's called purpose. It secures you. It is that thing that replies for you. What did the Bible say about Jesus? Jesus, look at this. Who for their joy set before him. There was something he was running towards. There was something... He despised the shame. People were mocking. People were talking. He didn't focus on them. What helped him? There was something before him. What is before you? When you think of how many people don't like me, how many people are speaking against me, 
How many people are fighting me? When you are thinking of that, it's because there is nothing before you. If you can be obsessed with what God has showed you. For 2027, for 2031, for 2035, you know you are running towards something. You won't have time for haters. Instead, you press forward grace for this thing. Grace for this thing. Wisdom for this thing. Help my discipline, dear Lord. Help me to maintain a prayer fire. To stay in alignment for this thing you've showed me. So please remember this. Daniel is proof that no matter how good you are, there is at least someone. Now, can you remember what happened in Daniel chapter 2? Where the king said, all the wise men who could not tell him his dream should be killed. Now, go back and study. After Daniel spent time in prayer, Daniel told the king what he dreamt. And Daniel told him the meaning. And Daniel pleaded with the king not to kill anybody. Are you getting that? Are you getting this now? Even the people whose life he preserved wanted his life. So in this now, this is the case of life. No matter how good you give people your last cup of water. There are people who still desire to see tears. Now, don't make them your focus. Don't. Just be aware. But don't make them your focus. What's the next now? Number eight. Are you learning something tonight? Now, this is reflection from the life of Daniel for influence. Reflection from the life of Daniel. Daniel is proof. That you need supernatural power to shut the mouth of lions. Daniel is proof. There is what strategy can do. There is what hard work can do. My friend, don't, don't, don't ignore a prayer life. You need supernatural power. There are the lions of the marketplace. There are the lions everywhere. You need supernatural power. You need supernatural power. Despite the busyness of Daniel, he had a prayer life. Vice president, does he praise? Who are you that don't have a prayer life? Vice president, you, you could not separate him from, he said, I rather, see, I rather die while praying than to stay alive without prayer. I rather die in the place of prayer than to stay alive without prayer. Because you need supernatural power. There are many Christians who are full of strategy. Zero power. So you've been saved for five years, ten years. They, they still press you in their dream. Hey! Hey! You still eat in their dream. Hey! Empty your power! It's a wake-up call for us. Don't ignore your prayer life. Don't ignore. You don't, you don't need a prayer point to pray. You, you pray to live. And you live to pray. Just make sure you sustain that life. Just make sure you sustain that fire. Are we together now? Can I ask you a very sincere question, dear friend? What is the excuse why you don't have a prayer life? Huh? What is your excuse why you don't have a prayer life? I'm not talking of the one you pray with church. Oh. I'm talking of your own, your own, your altar, your altar, where you meet with God daily. And there's the confidence you heard God for the day. What is your excuse? The excuse why you don't have a prayer life is, there is, is that excuse why you don't have power. That's the same excuse. I'm too busy, that's why I can't pray. That's it. You are too busy, that's why you don't have power. I'm too tired, that's why I don't pray. You are too tired, that's why there's no power. Your destiny is being tossed around. Zero prayer life. But in the name of Jesus, that changes today. For everyone hearing me, whether online or on site, the grace to maintain fervency in prayer, consistency in prayer, I decree it released upon you tonight. It's released upon you tonight. In the name of Jesus. I give us one more. And then we get into prayer. What number are we now? Number nine. Okay. Write this down. Let's give a bonus on this. Daniel is proof that no excuse is good enough to be unserious, unstable, and inconsistent with God. Daniel is proof that no excuse is good enough. My business is not going forward. That's why you know I'm now unserious with God. 
and this is happening to me. That's no excuse is good enough. A law was made that whoever prays will be killed. The man said, this excuse is not good enough to become unserious. Even at the expense of my life. Listen, dear friend. No excuse is good enough. To be unserious. To be unstable. To be incon... Now, you need to check yourself. Check that nothing has made you unserious. Check that nothing has made you unstable. Check that nothing is making you inconsistent. And finally, number 10. Thank you, Father. Reflections for influence from the life of Daniel. Daniel is proof. Mm. Thank you, Lord. It is be our testimony. Daniel is proof that if you choose to be loud about your spirituality, God will show off with your life. If you decide to become loud with your spirituality, God will show off with your life. God will show to others his hand is upon you. If you decide from this conference to become loud with your spirituality, Daniel was not afraid who would discover he has a prayer life. Daniel was not ashamed of his God. If you decide to become loud, God will show up. God will show up. Here is the principle. When you stand for God, God will stand with you. Is the principle. We have a generation of Christians today who are so quiet about their work with God. So quiet about it. So you are so silent. Someone can be around you for 30 minutes, one hour, and there will be no sign that you are a lover of Jesus. No sign. No sign. Your conversation does not show someone whose heart Jesus has purchased. Whose thought Jesus has taken over. When you decide to become loud about your spirituality, everything about you, don't be on the middle, don't be on the side. Some of you hearing me, you don't want to lose relationships. You don't want to lose businesses. If, if, if I, I push this Jesus thing too much, certain persons will not be my friend. Listen, whatever you lose because of Christ is not a loss. Whoever leaves you because of Jesus was not a loss. In fact, God pushed them out. If it's a breakthrough you lost because of your love for Jesus, you didn't lose anything. If you are patient with God, it will make sense after all. Are you with me at all here? Don't be neutral. Say, no, no, no. You have to strike a, a balance. So you have to strike a balance in this thing. You cannot just be Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Not Daniel. Oh. They told the man that you can't pray. The man opened his window. If this is what will repatriate me to Jerusalem. If this my prayer life is what will make me stop being vice president. Let it happen. I, I rather die in prayer than to live without a prayer life. If you decide... Let this be your take home. If you decide from today to become loud with your spirituality, God will show off with your life. Today we talk about a man who entered the lion's den and came out alive. That was a man who was loud with the spirituality. Don't just pray, oh God, let the lions of this world don't devour me. There is a pathway. If you decide to become loud with your spirituality, God will show off with your life. I believe that in this service this night, Maybe not on site, maybe online. God is raising righteous influences. Uh, okay, maybe some are, are here. Uh, maybe they are hearing me right now. God is raising righteous influences who will shine God's light from today. You will no longer be ashamed to identify with Jesus. You will become loud about your stand for Christ. You will deliver excellently everywhere you find yourself. You will not be afraid of relating with people. You will not be afraid of doing business with those who don't believe in your God. You will be so confident that your light will shine into their life. I pray in the name that is above every other name. The empowerment that comes upon those who make a decision.
nation to stand for Jesus. May that empowerment come upon you tonight. The empowerment, the grace, the wisdom that comes upon every world who makes a righteous decision to stand for righteousness. May that grace come upon you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over someone who perhaps your challenge is with confidence, your challenge is with boldness. I decree tonight by this encounter that the spirit of boldness is awakened on the inside. The spirit of boldness is awakened on your inside. In the name of Jesus, maybe your challenge is with speech and you say, I don't know how to talk. I decree that from this encounter, a divine ability comes upon you. God begins to work wonders through your words. In the name of Jesus, that as you open your mouth, the wisdom of God will come out. The wisdom of God will flow. In the name of Jesus, maybe someone hearing me, through certain experiences you've had, your confidence in God, your confidence in your gift, somehow has dropped. Yet the counsel of the Lord to bear from this conference, the Lord is beginning a new walk in your life. In the name of Jesus, there is a reawakening that is taking place tonight. For everyone whose heart is open to Jesus, I speak a revival in your spirit man. In the name of Jesus, I speak new visions. I speak new strength. I speak the wisdom of God. I decree that from this conference, you come to the consciousness of your divine advantage. You come to the understanding of your divine ability. You will not be afraid of any place. You will not be afraid of any office. You will not be afraid of any position. And I decree that the Lord will show off with your own life. The Lord will show off with your own life as you make a commitment to developing yourself for usefulness. I pray for grace, for consistency in the place of development. I pray for grace, for consistency in the place of growth. In the name of Jesus, I decree the spirit of encouragement upon your life. Be encouraged on the inside. Be encouraged on the inside. In the name of Jesus. But from this conference, no more will you exist in the midst of darkness without shining. No more. Because I hear God say from a conference like this, opportunities will be presented to you after now. Doors will be opened to you after now. The desire of God is that you use what you have heard to manifest his light in those places. And I decree in the name of Jesus that fear will not hold you back. Fear will not keep you from talking. Fear will not hold you back. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout after me say in the name of Jesus. I rise above the voice of fear. I rise above the voice of fear. I rise above the control of fear. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I rise above the voice of fear. I rise above the control of fear. I rise above the manipulation of fear. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. God's wisdom has been released afresh upon you tonight. Use what you've received to win. Use what you've received to rise. In the name of Jesus Christ. In any way, life challenges people. Wrong focus has made you focus on the minor and ignore the major. Has made your prayer life to be about the minor things. And you've ignored the things that matters to God. I pray that in this service tonight, whether you watch me online or your own site, the Lord repositions your heart. The Lord repositions your heart. He awakens his desires in you. He awakens righteous passions in you. He awakens his appetite in you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We are changed forever. We are blessed indeed. We are the Father's weapons. 
we go out to shine we go out to produce we go out to direct others to jesus that in this generation many are coming to jesus because of us we will no longer be silent we will no longer be irresponsible about this we stand up for this responsibility that through us the glory of god will make manifest for all those who believe can i hear the loudest amen all those that receive can i hear the loudest amen every change agent in the house can i hear the loudest amen now give the lord a mighty hand everyone